Imagine being so influential that the statue of yourself is the first thing visitors see when visiting a national museum. Diego Velázquez is that statue. Not only that, but many of his artworks are located in that museum. Among them is the famous painting Las Meninas. It is so important that the painting is never to leave the Museo de Prado. The Museo de Prado is located in Madrid, Spain. It is the National Spanish Art Museum where it is said to have the world's best collections of European art. Diego Velázquez was born on June 6, 1599 as Diego Rodríguez de Silva y Velázquez. He lived through the Baroque period, which was from the early 17th century to the late 18th century. Baroque is a very extravagant style of architecture, art, and music. It is supposed to send a message to its viewers and depict the subjects as more realistic. Most importantly, it was created by the Catholic Church to bring people back. It was during this time that the church was losing both power and members. As a young boy, he showed talent in painting. His first teacher was Francisco de Herrera. After Velázquez left, at the age of 12, he studied under Francisco Pacheco for five years. In 1618, at age 19, he married his teacher's daughter, Juana. They had two daughters. Around the early 1620s, Velázquez came to know Don Juan de Francesca, chaplain of King Philip IV, and so he traveled to Madrid. In 1622, Philip IV's favorite court painter, Rodrigo de Villadrando, died. This led Francesca to summon Velázquez to the court of Count Duke of Olivares, the minister of King Philip IV, where Velázquez painted Francesca. The painting was then sent to the royal palace where Philip liked the painting. In 1623, Velázquez made the first of many paintings of King Philip, then 18 years old at the time, where the king decreed no other artist would paint him. In 1627, King Philip arranged a competition among the best painters to which Velázquez won, earning him the promotion of Gentleman Usher, a servant ranked between the steward and the lower servants. In 1629, Velázquez made his first trip to Italy. Afterwards, he will also accompany the king to other places which will also lead to his growing close relationship with the King of Spain. In the following years, Velázquez experienced a gradual rise in the court. In 1636, he was promoted to assistant to the wardrobe. 1643, he was made to gentleman of the bedchamber. He was also given more responsibilities, showing the close relationship between Philip and Velázquez. Due to his growing duties, Velázquez had less time to paint. In 1649, he made a second trip to Italy to update himself with Italian Baroque. Accompanying him was his slave, Juan de Pareja, whom he set free in 1650. During his visit to Italy, he met with Pope Innocent X. Seeking to strengthen his relations in Rome and go further up the rings, Velázquez wanted to befriend the Pope, knowing that Innocent X was the key to what he wanted, being part of the nobility of Spain or obtaining knighthood from the Order of Santiago. Four years before his death, Velázquez painted Las Meninas in 1656, translated into The Ladies in Waiting. This takes place in Velázquez's studio. The painting is regarded as an excellent example of Spanish Baroque art, as Baroque art was meant to influence and send important messages to its viewers. Not only that, but it is also meant to capture a dramatic, emotional moment in time, to show reality instead of idealizing the subjects. Looking at the painting, the viewer can see Velázquez's excellent use of Cheryl Scordo, the moment which he managed to capture, and his bold statement. Here we see the tones that make this shape almost look like it has volume. It is painted in such a way that some also suggest that the painting is a mirror Velázquez was looking at due to the king and queen's reflection. In short, Velázquez painted it in the view of the king and queen. This also causes people to question as to who is the real focal point. The subjects as are numerically ordered are Infanta Margarita Teresa, Doña Isabel Velasco, Doña María Agustina Sarmiento de Sotomayor, María Barbola, Nicolás Pertusato, Doña Marcela de Ulloa, Unidentified Bodyguard, Don José Nieto Velázquez, Diego Velázquez, King Philip IV, and Queen Mariana. Of course, let's not forget the Mastiff by the Dwarf's Feet. When analyzing Las Meninas, I will be using iconography and cultural studies to interpret this artwork. Our first subject is Infanta Margarita Teresa, daughter of King Philip IV and Queen Mariana of Austria. She appears to be standing in the center and therefore has the most light, indicating that she is the focal point. On the left is Lady-in-Waiting Doña María Agustina Sarmiento de Sotomayor. On the right is Doña Isabel de Velasco. The Sotomayor seems to be offering Margarita Teresa a red cup to which the Infanta raised her hand as if to take it. Her body is slightly to the left, but her face is facing the light, with her eyes to the viewer, as if she was looking at Nicolás but turned her gaze to her parents. Her skin is pale and her hair is blonde, a little below her shoulder. 
Her clothes appear to be two parts. The skirt, which is called the cartwheel fartingale, and the upper part. Both are beige. On her chest is a red-orange decoration, as on her wrists and hair. Her hair is a typical style of that time. The way she carries herself and her position shows that she is of rank. As a royal, she cannot act like a child her own age would, but will have to show etiquette. To Margarita Teresa's left is Doña Isabel de Velasco. She is a lady-in-waiting, meaning she was a lower status than the Infanta, but still of rank. She is meant to be a companion. She is also wearing a two-piece dress with a cartwheel farthingale. The bottom half of her dress is a grayish color with a hint of green. On the hem of her skirt, there are two lines of white going around her. About six inches above, there is also a line that appears to circle her skirt. The bottom half is a white color with patterns of greenish gray. She seems to look towards the viewer. Her hair is black and above her shoulders with white decorations on her hair. Her wrists also have decorations like Marita Teresa. She appears to be leaning forward as if she's in the middle of curtsying. On Margarita Teresa's right is her other lady-in-waiting, Doña Maria Agustina Sarmiento de Sotomayor. She is kneeling and facing Margarita Teresa, offering her a red cup. Her dress is like the other two. The top part is white, the bottom half is a dark green with some white lines at the hem and more white patterns going vertical by her hip. Her hair is like Doña Isabel Velasco's, short with whitish decoration on the side of her head. The way the Sotomayor is leaning and the position of her hands indicates that she cares for the well-being of Margarita Teresa. To the left of Doña Isabel de Velasco is a dwarf called Maria Barbola. She is looking at the viewer with a serious expression. She is not as light-skinned as the previous figures. Her hair is brown and loose going past her shoulders. She is also wearing a two-piece dress. It is a dark blue-green color. The top part is outlined with white. She is wearing a golden necklace. With her left hand, she is holding what looks like a rope or chain that disappears over her shoulder. On the far left side of the painting is another dwarf named Nicolás Bertuzato. His hair is loose going past his shoulders. He is facing away from the light, looking at the dog and placing his left foot on the mastiff by Maria Barbola's feet. His clothes are red with black sleeves and white cuffs. The color is also white. His pants and just under the knee, he is wearing black stockings with brown shoes. Berto Sato also appears to be younger than Maria Barbola. Behind Doña Isabel de Velasco and Maria Barbola is a nun named Doña Marcela de Ulloa and a bodyguard. The nun is supposed to be the chaperone of Infanta Margarita Teresa. She is standing next to an unidentified bodyguard and it seems like she may have been talking to him. He in turn is staring towards the board in front of Velasquez. His clothes are black and his sleeves reach his wrists. His color is white but he is mostly covered by the shadows as the light does not seem to reach him. His expression can be seen as him smiling. In the far back is a man that is not known if he is coming or leaving. His name is Don Jose Nieto Velázquez, the Queen's Chamberlain, an officer who manages the household of a monarch or noble. He is suspected to be related to the artist. It can be seen that he is holding a curtain. According to Joel Snyder, he suggests that Jose Nieto Velázquez is there so the king and queen can depart. He supports his argument by pointing to Doña Isabel de Velasco, who appears to be dropping to a curtsy. The next figure is Diego Velázquez himself. He is staring straight ahead. In his right hand is a paintbrush, on the other is the palette. Painting himself into this was considered a bold move as he was putting himself into the same painting as the king, a royal commission making it a self-portrait, but also sending the message that he was part of the family. Not only that, but the studio had been the room of the recently deceased crown prince. It was during this time that Velázquez was trying to obtain membership of the Order of Santiago. At this point, he was already rejected twice due to his status as an artist. It is suggested that Velázquez was trying to send a message that he was worthy to be accepted. In fact, this whole painting could be interpreted as Velázquez trying to send a strong message that he matters more than what they are giving him credit for. Painting himself into Las Meninas is what makes this painting dramatic. His usage of the Baroque style is actually perfect to convey what he was saying. What is worth noting is that he is wearing the Order of Santiago. Velázquez had not been admitted into the order until a year after he died. It is said that Philip had ordered the cross to be painted on it. Others say that the king painted the cross himself. The last figures in the painting is King Philip IV and Queen Mariana of Austria, whom Philip married after his first wife died, seeking to produce a male heir. The queen is on the left side and the king on the right. The king appearing in this painting is significant because at this time Philip did not want to be painted anymore. Although they were well off, it was during this time that Spain was declining economically. Their imports from the Americas were decreasing and Philip had tried to improve the economy and do a military reform without success. All of these problems were taking a toll on the king. Before Las Meninas, King Philip was painted with great reluctance, but here he lets Velázquez once again paint him. This is showing how much King Philip held Velázquez in such high esteem, how much he trusted him, and the extent of their relationship. 
Most importantly, this was showing that King Philip was approving of Velázquez's quest to join the Order of Santiago. When the painting was finished, King Philip hung it in his room so only a select few had the privilege of admiring the portrait. After Velázquez died, King Philip had mentioned that he missed the painter after knowing him for more than 30 years and watching him rise up the ranks. Centuries after this painting was completed, it remains one of the most debated paintings. People have written much about his artwork and have asked who is the real focal point. In my opinion, it is Velázquez. This whole painting is truly about him and the other people are there to make his argument stronger, to make him seem important enough and to show his worth. Velázquez's legacy still lives on and other artists are still fascinated by the use of his techniques. One example is Pablo Picasso. As previously said, Las Meninas is considered a great work of art. Pablo Picasso had been influenced by Las Meninas as he repainted it in his own versions in 1957. He painted his version as a political protest regarding how Spanish Republicans were treated, who were still in prison after the Civil War ended in 1939. It was Republicans and Nationalists fighting against each other, and here I believe Picasso was trying to send a message for unification. For my student artwork, I decided to make a collage. I picked these pictures because the Baroque period was about extravagance, and I think these pictures show just that. I picked the pictures that represent something from Las Meninas. The chair and mirror is supposed to represent the king and queen sitting during the painting of the portrait. The red cup is like the one Doña Maria Agustina Sarmiento de Sotomayor is offering to Infanta Margarita Teresa. The flowers in the vase is like the decorations the females were wearing. I decided to add the chandelier to further exaggerate this artwork. As for the expensive camera, I wanted to add it to show what I used to take a picture of my cat. The picture was chosen because, like we see in Las Meninas, it shows that a moment is being captured. Here my cat is in the middle of licking his paw. The quality is not that great, but I like it as it also reminds me of how Jose Nieto Velázquez was painted from a faraway angle. I added the cross in the corner because, like Las Meninas, the cross was not added until after the painting was finished. I also wanted to add a religious undertone like in the painting. Knowing the story of how I found my cat, people sometimes say that he is a gift from God. Las Meninas does not have obvious religious symbols but it is more to the background and I wanted to do the same thing to my collage.